Hey guys, this is Amy with Jack and Amy Dev, and in this series, we have been learning all about host permissions. In this video, we are going to be looking into the Active Tab permission, how to invoke it, and what it gives us access to. Let's get started. There are many benefits to using the Active Tab permissions. In the official documentation, it says that the user will not receive any warnings when you request this permission. As you can see, it says here, with the Active Tab, it has no special permissions. When you're requesting host permissions, the warning that the user sees is that it reads and changes all your data on the website you visit. And if you request tabs permission, it says that it reads your browsing history. So what does it give it access to? The Active Tab allows us to do the following. In call tabs.execute script or tabs.insert CSS on the current, on the current tab, the active tab. You can also get the URL, title, Fabi icon for that tab. And you can also intercept network requests in the tab to the tab's mainframe origin using web request API. So how does it work? What do you have to do? To invoke the active tab or activate it, you can, it is done with user gesture. You can execute a browser action, which is when you click on the extension uh, icon on the top. And it also includes when you click on an extension and actually choose a button here. So that is also a user gesture. You can uh, do it by executing a page action, by executing a context menu. And the context menu is uh, when you right click and it offers you right here the different Chrome extensions. You can also execute it by running a keyboard shortcut from the commands API and accepting a suggestion from the Omnibox API. Here in our example Chrome extension, we have our manifest. And as you can see, the only permissions that we are requesting is the active tab. We don't have any host permissions. We don't have the tabs permission. Let's look at our background page. In the background page, we are creating a URL to jackandamydev.com and logging the, the tab. Later, we are going to set a timeout and wait for three seconds and query by the URL, which is jackandamydev.com and try to run execute script on this tab. Uh, and it's just going to be a simple alert. So we're going to wait three seconds and try to do it automatically and see what happens. On the next code over here, we have a Brax browser action listener that waits for the, that listens for the click of the user. And we're going to log this click. And then we're going to try to do the same thing as we did above. We're going to try to execute a script in this URL. Okay, let's see how this works. So here is our active tab host permissions and we're going to go ahead and run it and it should open a website. And here we are. And it's going to wait three seconds and there it goes. We try to execute a script. Now, I am on this tab and it is an active tab and I have the active tab permission. But as you can see, it does not give us permission to run automatically a script. It has to be done through a user gesture as we read earlier in the, doc in the documentation. So let's try to do it the right way this time and click on the browser action, which is right here. And when we click, we have access to the tab. And as you can see, we have access to the Fabi icon. We have access to the title of the page and the URL. And we didn't have to ask for host permissions or tabs permission. Let's go to another page and see if we, if it works the same. Okay. So here is our coffee account and we're going to click on here again. And there we can execute the script again and we get all the information of this site. So the beauty of active tab is that you can access everything you can execute script and access the information of the tab via user gestures. So the user has to choose 
when to execute it. So let's recap and look at three of the most important things that you need to know about the Active Tab permission. One, it only works with a user gesture. So either we have to click on the browser action, choose a button inside a pop-up page. I mean, a pop-up page. Um, you can right click and choose a context menu. And we execute this code here. Um, the other thing is that it only runs the code in the active tab. So if I have three different tabs and I'm trying to run this code on the one behind or on another page, it's not going to work. It only gives you access to the page you are looking at right here. And number three, it is not needed when you declare a content script in the manifest.json because as we remember in our other example, uh, when we made a clock on top, the you actually request host permissions when you are injecting a content script. So you do not need the active tab to run the content script. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this short video and you are able to clear out any doubts of how the active tab permission works. And, you and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out our other videos that come out every Monday. I hope your Chrome extension is successful. See you next time. Bye.